It is the first time ever in our planet's history that we've had the chance to look at this distant planet's rings along their edge. Mark Showalter is with the SETI project, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence project, that is, in Mountain View. He says if you compare the rings of Uranus to the rings of Saturn... Those are very bright. Those are very icy. So, and they're basically uh, uh, almost white, very, very reflective. The rings of Uranus are very different. They're very dark material, probably similar to the sum of the very darkest asteroids. It only happens once every 42 years, but since Uranus's rings were discovered exactly 30 years ago, this is the first time we've seen the rings do this. Showalter says since they're so dark, they're hard to spot even with good equipment, and besides that, they're extra hard to see right now. This is a particularly interesting time to uh, view the rings. Not only are they dark, but they're edge on. And so the very, very dense rings in the system have essentially blinked out. We can't see them at all. But what we can see are these very, very faint clouds of material that have been surrounding the rings all along, but we're always lost in the glare of the, of the main rings of Uranus until now. The scientists are all a Twitter, to be sure, and for good reason. They've been working and preparing for this for quite a while. We started planning observations that would lead up to this ring plane crossing uh, in 2002. And uh, so now was kind of the main event finally after, after about five years of planning and observing. Now, here's my problem. So far, only I and Mark Showalter, my interviewee, have expressed any interest in this story at all. For each friend, coworker, or family member I tell about this story, I get about a minute or so into the explanation. I pull out a quarter, turn it on its edge to demonstrate. I met with the lizard eyes. That's the phenomenon my philosophy dean once described as people looking at you, but really there's nothing behind there. I asked Showalter, other than the general scientific interest, why is this story interesting? And he had a pretty good answer. It's something that, you know, it's, it's basically a, a rare event that happens maybe twice in a lifetime. But for us, it's the result that uh, one of the rings, at least, of Uranus is basically in the wrong place. However, the lizard eyes go away and the jokes start flying when I mention which planet this is happening at. Uranus, the rings around Uranus, one of them is in the wrong place, and they've all temporarily disappeared. Snickers, sometimes blatant cackles, other times, and not one person interested in taking me seriously. Fortunately, Showalter was familiar with the humor and psychology of trying to report with a straight face the story that the rings of Uranus have vanished briefly and are now in the wrong place. And by the way, Uranus, Uranus, how does an expert say it? I have no particular preference. I don't know. I guess uh, Uranus sounds a little bit less scatological or something, but that's what most people in the in the planetary astronomy community pronounce it. You know, most people say Uranus, and most people laugh when they hear it, and, you know, it doesn't matter to me. Call it what you want. Laugh if you want. And I think I will. Reporting for the Progressive News Hour, I'm Sebastian Kuntz in San Francisco.